Hi everyone. Today we're going to look, uh, take a close look at aliasing in Java. It's very, very, very tricky, so pay attention closely. In this client program, we have a bug object named Flick. And because it's an object variable, it's really just a memory address. Uh, the object variable, that is, stores a memory address. So when the computer executes this line of code here, it finds an available memory address in the, in the uh, heap of the computer where it could store an object big enough to store all the properties of a bug. And uh, bug objects, according to the examples we've looked at already in our notes and everything, they have a, they have a property called my color, and they have a property called, I think, my direction, and they have a my row and a my column. So all of uh, those ints or doubles need to be stored in the memory of the computer. And this chunk of memory was found by the operating system where all of this data could be stored. And the, this might be the uh, memory address is A32 through the hexadecimal memory address A48 or something like that. But we're only concerned with the starting memory address of this chunk of memory. So the, the variable flick really just stores A32, which helps the computer then go to the memory address A32 and find the specific properties or instance variables that are actually make flick what he is. Okay, well, the, uh, the uh, instantiation part of this line of code tells us to store the color dot green for my color and 90 of course for the direction which I think is east in, my, in the, the bug world, the grid world and the my row is zero and the my column is zero. Then the computer needs uh, finds, realizes that it needs to find a chunk of memory where Ada can, uh, her object can be stored. And let's just pretend that that happens to be the memory address, the hexadecimal memory address B52. And um, Ada's color, you see, is also green. And her direction is 90. And her row is 1. And her, oh, sorry about that, it's off the screen. Her row is 1. And her column is 2. I don't care uh, what these instance variables are named, whether it's my row or row, it doesn't really matter. It's all data stored in the area of the, of the memory of the computer for that specific object. Uh, most importantly though, B52 is the memory address, also known as a reference, where uh, that's stored in the inst object variable ADA. These are object variables, ADA and Flick. Don't confuse the word object variable with instance variables, which are the names of properties that are stored in a class definition file. Okay, so uh, the first real line of code here that's interesting to execute. System out print flick.getLocation. So the computer goes to flick, which is really memory address A32. So it goes to A32, and it calls the method getLocation, which is public. And getLocation, we can assume, returns a location object, which is really a row column ordered pair. So 0 comma 0 is what is returned. Uh, I'm just going to put parentheses around it so that people kind of know uh, that that's a row column pair. So that's the uh, answer to number one. Now this line of code, ADA equals flick. Okay, assignment statements work from right to left. So you ask what is currently stored in flick? A32. So an A32 memory address is being placed and assigned into the variable ADA, thus overriding the B52. So now the line of code system out print flick .get location tells the computer to go to flick, which is A32, and uh, get A32's location. Uh, the location that's stored there, which is still row zero, 00. So really, the answer is the same for number two. Um, 
That's just the way that executes. Now flick equals null. Okay, null is really a special name for memory address zero. So the A32 is now overwritten with the memory address zero. And this gets interesting because the next line of code, system out print flick location, creates an error. A null exception runtime error, to be specific. Uh, and you were advised by the directions to print the word error if an error occurs. Why? Because flick no longer exists. This chunk of, uh, of code, this chunk of data, is no longer referenced to by flick. Whoops. Uh, it's still being referenced, sorry about that, by ADA, but flick is uh, no longer uh, uh, making use of that memory location. So uh, always be careful. Uh, a true garbage collection there would not have uh, uh, reclaimed this memory uh, for the for the uh, operating system because ADA still does make reference to A32 but Flick doesn't as an object variable name Flick no longer connects to A32 only ADA does okay that takes us down now to uh, the next line of code here system out print ADA's location well ADA's location well first of all what is ADA? ADA is the memory address A32 which still has a location of 00, zero. sorry for my uh, uh, accidental mistake there a second ago, crossing that all out. So zero, zero does print out for uh, answer four. Okay, interesting. We're bringing Flick back to life, if you will. You don't want to re-declare Flick as a bug. You can't type the word bug there because uh, that's, that's a one-time only uh, act of declaration that you can put a data type in front of an object variable name in a given method. But flick equals new bug is legal. You can put the word new bug here, just like uh, we did up here. We're calling the other constructor from the bug class, and we're passing in red, 90, 30, and 4. But the computer now needs to find a chunk of memory where another bug object, this time again named flick, can uh, be, be uh, stored. Well, notice that B52 was no longer being used by any object variable. So this chunk of memory down here was reclaimed by the computer, by the operating system, perhaps for use by other computer programs, uh, Facebook or the internet or something that's running also in the background on this uh, particular computer device. Well, let's pretend that the memory address uh, um, 1B5 is now access, uh, free and big enough to store a bug object. So we have room here for my color, my direction, my row, and my column. And we are putting uh, the values red, 90, 3, and 4 there. And that is now flick, so across that zero out from the uh, word null and put 1B5 there. Just a number that I made up. Java does not allow a programmer to pick his or her uh, specific memory cells. Unlike the language C or C++ even, uh, we can't do that in Java. It keeps Java as a safe language compared to other languages that allow you to directly reference any memory on that computer device and essentially hack uh, applications that are running at the same time. Okay, well, flick.getLocation executes, and because flick is the memory address 1B5. We go to the chunk of memory known as 1B5 and uh, we call the, the method getLocation in the bug class which tells us to find the row and column which is 3 and 4 and that's why the answer here is 3 comma 4. Okay, the, we're all winding down here. System out print flick dot my color. That should look very weird to you on the AP exam. Anytime in a client program that you're trying to access something that starts with the prefix my uh, is just an error because properties are always private. Anything that starts with my cannot legally be accessed. In fact, it would be a squiggly uh, a compile error. It wouldn't, this program would not have even executed with this uh, line of code. 
Next, flick.setLocation, add.getLocation. Well, we work from inside the parentheses out. So add.getLocation, let's go to add. Add is memory address A32. So at memory address A32, the location is currently 00. zero. So this is really uh, to be interpreted as if we had flick.setLocation parentheses 0, 0. So that's really calling the uh, modifier method setLocation and telling it to set Flick's location to 0, 0. Well, Flick is currently 1B5, which means that uh, at the memory address 1B5, we have a row of 3. Well, that's now 0. So cross the, zero, the 3 out and make it a 0. And the second parameter here, this 0, is overriding the 4, which was the column. So, in other words, what was Flick's location is now overriding, I'm sorry, what was Ada's location is overriding Flick's location. So, both bugs are on top of each other in, in a GUI interface. That's just what you would see. So, uh, we are, because we're in a system out print statement, we are printing out 0, comma, 0. Hey, good luck. Good luck with the rest of this worksheet. Uh, question number two down below is pretty much the same stuff, just a different way of asking it.